Hello Doodlebugs, it's Mary, and this is a very special video. This is something that's been suggested, requested, demanded. Um, I've been getting comments asking for a real-time video, watching my paintings being made. So be careful what you wish for. This video is going to be a little bit longer than normal for obvious reasons. So I hope you're wearing comfortable pants and your gym jams, pajamas, or that you've gone to the bathroom beforehand. You have a comfy drink, sipping tea, sipping cocoa, hot cocoa in your tummy. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Um, this isn't a traditional tutorial as I've been making them. And uh, I, I've been trying to catch up on the tutorials. They do take a long time to film. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to do a real time video and add some commentary to it as well so that you can see the process that I usually go through, that I endure when I make paintings. And uh, you can also get a little bit of the, the behind the scenes commentary, or you can just shut up my face and play your own music. The choice is yours, choose wisely. So to begin, I should mention, uh, this is the painting Attack of the Dragon, which I made in the year of 2014. And this is just half of the painting that we're going to see in this video. This is just me making the dragon because otherwise this would be a really long video and I don't know how long my voice can hold out. And I'm also getting mildly hungry, which, oh, this is going to be interesting, an adventure. So I'm making this painting with watercolor on watercolor paper, 140 pound. That's the weight. And uh, that's the weight I like. It's a good weight. It can handle water. Uh, you'll notice that I'm laying down a wash to begin with. That's what I like to do. I find uh, I like watercolor and using it in the way that watercolor is unique. And that's letting the paint flow wherever the water is and it naturally and organically mixes. Um, so I'll start paintings with putting water down on the page putting down one or two colors. Uh, in the case of this painting, I do a yellow with a green on top and I just let it bleed and blend together in its own way. And uh, I like doing that because it's the sloppy stuff and the sloppy stuff can start at the top. And then as things dry and I continue making the painting, I can slowly but surely define lines and add the detail and make it a little more solid. So. This is how I usually begin paintings. Um, I also tend to do a lot of yellow washes in the beginning just because yellow is, it's a weaker color. I find that it gets dominated by other colors very easily. So if you want to use some watercolor to sketch out or outline your images before you actually paint it, that's a really good color. It's gonna have a yellow undertone. So if you don't want that, if you just wanna do blues, you could do a blue sketch, very light, but um, there's no shame, no shame in sketching. That's a question I get a lot. Uh, people ask me, do you sketch before you make your paintings? I do. I, a lot of times sketch them out in a sketchbook. This one in particular, because I wanted to get the, the look and the posture of the dragon. Uh, it's just so, just so exact, which I did not <laughs> achieve in the final painting. I don't know. I don't know why that happens. I'll sketch out a figure and be like, yes, this is perfect. And then I just disregard all of that hard work, all of that pre-production when I get to the, the painting part. But no one needs to know that. Oh, crap. I told everyone. Um, yeah, so I sketch things out and I don't know how much color correction I'm going to do to this video in post, but if I don't do much, you may be able to see some of the pencil lines on the page. Um, yeah, it's just outlines, very rough, nothing super detailed, but I will sketch um, shapes, markers, or vague outlines where I want characters to be, mostly for composition or gesture, you know, the posture of the dragon. I wanted to look pretty normal or interesting at least. So I'll do that and I do it very light because um, my style, I don't want the pencil lines showing through. I, I've seen beautiful watercolor paintings though where you can clearly see the sketch underneath and it looks awesome. Excuse me, I may have burped. I may have just burped. 
I apologize for that. Guys, we're going to get really familiar. We're going to get really familiar right now. Yep, that was definitely a burp. So sketching. There's nothing to be ashamed of with sketching. I kind of feel too like there's a weird misconception that artists who can just lay down the paint without sketching beforehand are so gifted and so good. And that's true. I mean, that's, it, it's a skill. It's, eh, it's all relevant as far as I'm concerned. I would much rather sketch it out and not have to redo it five times <laughs> in a night uh, because time is so beautiful and precious. And I've been there. I've redone paintings before. I've filmed entire painting videos and then I realized this didn't turn out as I wanted it to. And for my purposes, uh, the final product is pretty much focused on the video, on the time lapse. I, I make pretty, pretty videos. That was always the objective. Uh, I always wanted to make something that people would enjoy, not just artists and aspiring artists, um, but just anybody. I wanted it to be something where anybody could sit and watch it and be like, that was cool. So there's a lot of smoke and mirrors involved, which is why I'm kind of happy to show a glimpse of, you know, the real time, the weirdness, the ugliness. There's a lot of, you know, me going back to the palette. Anytime my hand's disappearing from the video, you'll see that's me mixing paint or pulling water onto the brush or changing brushes or having a sip of tea or wine or coffee. All three in a magic cocktail that is chemicals. Um, yeah, just kind of showing you the all the action that's happening behind the curtain. So I apologize if I've misled anybody, but um, but I've I've noticed there there have been you know questions and comments asking like oh do you sketch before you paint these how long does it take to paint and um yeah I just kind of want to put it in perspective uh, a lot of times actually every day like in everything you see you're being presented with a final product when you read a book. That is the final product. That is something that an author has worked on really long. There's words, there's sentences, there's uh, scenarios, characters, a whole lot of stuff that may have been written and then never included, like pulled at the last minute. Uh, you never know. And so uh, you see a movie and you don't see the hours that the actors were there and the crew. You don't see you know, the night shoots where everybody was working till seven in the morning and then had like a five hour turnaround. And it was like, ah, oh God, I got to get home and get to sleep because I got to work like right away tomorrow going from day to night shoots. You don't see that. You don't see the screenwriter writing. You, you don't see the producers meeting. I assume that's what they do. Not the producers, executives, the producers producing, producers everywhere, the producers on the phone. You don't, you don't get that. You just watch the final thing and then you think, oh, that was really interesting. Uh, and yeah, I, don't know, it, it, I think the it's it, 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 uh, sentences, Mary. Um, what I, what I want to say, I think, is that when you are aspiring to be a creative person, you see all these final products and it's like you're seeing the mountain and you're not seeing the path to get to the top. It's like a giant cloud has covered the middle part of the mountain. You can see the tip through the top of the clouds. You can see the very base where you're at, but you don't see the middle part of the mountain and you don't know if there is a path or what the best way up is. And um, and then you also see people on the tippy top of the mountain and you're like, how did they get up there so fast? Uh, but what you don't realize is that they woke up hours and hours before you and started climbing and finding the path. Um, so, yeah, hopefully watching the way something a painting comes together kind of gives you a sense of where that path is. Well, it gives you a little hope, gives you a little hope. Clearly, I was going through comments today and emails and uh I love, I love you all. I love you all. And I thank you so much for it. 
Um, I've got, I get questions from people about YouTube and asking, so what's been, what is your experience with YouTube comments been? Uh, and they never say it in that voice because that is a fictional character. I've never spoken to a person like that. But they ask, it's a woman on YouTube. What's it like? What are, what are the comments like? And I, I feel weird saying, you know, I actually don't really have that many, <laughs> many like sad or uh, uh, aggressive comments. Because uh, you'll see, you'll watch videos, especially, I think it's in the comedy realm, for sure, people are harsh people can be so mean and aggressive or if there's anything that mentions anything political uh anything like that the president um then that's where you start getting weird comment words wars and like battles and awful negativity and i don't have much of that i spot something every now and then but then it just gets ignored or you know brave souls step out and shoot it down or say something and i love that i appreciate that and so thank you i i do want to thank everybody who's you know in there because it's a very intelligent group too i find youtube comments are notorious <laughs> for being asinine and silly and just uh, probably the dumbest thing in the world you know they make fun of it all the time on reddit and that's true to a degree, but I do feel like there's a very bright crowd uh, who watches my videos, which is really, really very sweet and makes me proud. I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud to tell people, you know what? I don't have problems with comments. I don't have problems with commenters. They're a pretty cool bunch. So thank you. Um, I don't know how I got on this topic of comments. But uh, I was thinking about, I was reading a lot of comments. And uh, amidst those, I do get the sense of who's an artist or who's a young person wanting to draw. And that terrifies me because I know what that is like to, to see what you want, to see where you want to be as a creator of any sort. And to hate yourself for not being there. <laughs> and it's okay to feel that. It's not okay, though, to sink into it. Uh, th that's that. It's not okay. Don't sink into that. that. That's not what it's about. It's not worth it. Because you're only going to get better by pushing yourself. Uh, it's Oh, God, it sounds so cliche. But it's it's true. Um, yeah, it, it takes time. And it takes practice and it takes making thousands of crappy paintings, crappy, crappy drawings, really bad drawings, so many really bad drawings. I was visiting home for the holidays and I was going through, there's a box underneath my bed in my old bedroom full of paper with paint on it. I'm not going to call them paintings. It's paper with a lot of paint on it. A lot of paper, a lot of paint on it. Not very many finished paintings. I realize that I spent a lot of time, I'm going to say wasting paper. But in the end, it wasn't a waste. Uh, it's not a final product. It's not a final painting. But uh, it's just me playing with paint on paper and there's thousands of little images of trees <laughs> I, I don't know orbs just weird sh random shapes shapes that I thought oh this is really interesting maybe I saw something online and tried to emulate it just al almost like little tiny nuggets of a painting or a part a small slice and there are thousands of sheets of watercolor paper with these little slices of paintings on them. And I forget <laughs> all that time, all of those attempts. I look back on them now and I realize, oh, I know exactly what I was trying there. I know exactly what I was trying. Interesting. But um, 
you know, and at the time I was just kind of occupying my hands, occupying my time and trying to get something solidified or mastered. Um, I think that's the key, really. I think too often we feel like we need to make a painting to practice. And really, like, it's what a sketchbook is all about. I mean, you have a book or just a folder full of blank paper and you scribble on it and you draw hands or you draw an eyeball, you you know, parts of people. You don't have to put together cohesive images, really. You just need to work on the little bits and it's the little bits where you feel like you need to improve. And that's going to change. That's going to change all the time, all the time. Um, I'm, I do uh, one of my favorite hobbies, soon to be, uh, I guess, a slight side job. Uh, I love doing improv, and I actually just got back from a rehearsal or practice, I guess I would say, uh, and we're working on something new, and we're working on doing more like longer grounded scenes and the basics. Uh, you know, going back to the basics. Oh my God, we need it. But um, it got me thinking about how we've been doing this together as a, a team of improvisers, acting, you know, comedy shows, make them ups as you goes for five years. We've been doing it for a long time. And, you know, every week we rehearse and we focus on something a little bit different every week. And sometimes it's something we've focused on before. Sometimes it's something totally new. Sometimes it's a reaction to our previous show. Like, oh, we had a really slow show. So let's work on picking up the pace. Let's work on those edits and branching out from ideas. And uh, it's, I think it's the same thing in the art world. I mean, it's, it's all the same. It's all tied in. It's all fabric in the universe, man. Um, it's the same with art. You know, you'll go for a while mastering or trying to get a drawing people and figures and you'll feel comfortable with it after a long time of trying. And then you'll suddenly realize, well, I'm, I feel comfortable with this, but I'm not so comfortable with colors. I feel like my colors, I just don't get colors. So then you got to practice that and focus on that. And then once you feel comfortable with that, maybe you'll think, well, I'm not so comfortable with the compositions that I've been producing. I feel like they're all the same. And so then that's something you focus on. And so it's going to be a constant uh, re-education, constant series of different focuses, different goals. Um, if you do feel like you're struggling, maybe have a goal for every week. And it doesn't have to be something as broad and weird as I'm going to draw well this week. Try to get very specific with it, I would say. Try to think of something that you're struggling with, uh, that you can just a little tiny part, a little slice of the image, the final painting or drawing. You know, is it shading? Do you feel uncomfortable shading? Do you look and say, hmm, there's not a lot of contrast in my images and I want there to be more. Just practice just drawing shapes with contrast. Um, and set up like little goals, little goals for yourself. It's just, you know, a thread of little goals and that's going to lead to a rope of hope to pull yourself up into the land of dope where you make dope, dope drawings. Dope. That's what the kids are saying these days. And that's my advice to you. It's weird giving out advice. It really is. I feel like I'm looking over my shoulder, trying to think, is somebody going to come and tell me I have no authority in this? <laughs> ma'am, 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 you need to stop teaching art. Ma'am, step back from the art tutorials. Ma'am, no, no ma'am, ma'am, put the gun down. Ma'am, it's not worth it. Ma'am, ma'am, put the gun down. It's not worth it. No, 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 no. You, you, you put the dinosaur down. You put that dinosaur down, ma'am, ma'am. I'm gonna shoot him. Ma'am, it's okay. We can get out of this, all right? Take her down. Take her out. And then that's how I, I end my legacy. 
going out in a bang and a flash. I have no authority to teach art. <laughs> it's a weird, weird, weird thing where you have to start articulating stuff that comes fairly naturally. Think about it. So the closest thing to drawing that I'm going to say everyone can do, uh, and I'm, no, not everyone can do it, writing, writing, literacy, um, being able to write the alphabet, write your name. Can you write your name? That's drawing. I'm, I'm stealing this whole analogy from the lovely and talented Will Terrell, who is a fellow YouTube artist and, uh, he does videos uh, of people sketching, which is amazing. If you want to watch more real-time stuff, I'm going to uh, link him in the description below in the doobly-doo because he's got, he's a fountain of knowledge. OMG! I just said OMG. That's how good he is. And um, he has this analogy of, you know, if you can write a letter, that's a drawing. That's You're drawing a character, and that character happens to be a letter of the alphabet. And you had to learn that. You had to take that time. And you had those little those pages with the, the lines, the guidelines, the markers. The, there's the red and the blue, and there's that dotted line in the middle. You had those pages, and you worked over and over again on writing A big A and a little A. And if you went back and you looked at those pages and your own little tiny person handwriting or, you know, big person who missed a lot of school and ended up going back and learned to write, and you look at that and you'll see, oh, like these lines are so squiggly and it's also rough and weird. And as gross and strange as your current handwriting may or may not be, mine is awful. Your handwriting when you first started is going to be much rougher, much rougher. And that's the same thing with drawing. And you just have to train your hand. And then when you teach people to do that, you have to train yourself to explain what that very natural feeling is to yourself. Does that make any sense? Like if you, if you had to explain to somebody who's never picked up a pencil and written anything, how they write the letter A or how they write the letter B and when to know exactly how the curve of that B goes in and then back out again. It's a strange, weird little thing. So I'm appreciating it though. I'm learning to articulate those kind of things. I find it, it helps me. It helps me as an artist to figure it out. And I'm almost teaching myself again as I go and revisiting it reviewing it never hurts to review it like the other day I was uh I'm doing uh, the outlines for hand tutorials hands are another big suggestion big request people want to learn how to draw hands I get it they're weird they're funky they're complex they're just characters in and of themselves so I was kind of outlining how to approach drawing hands um because at this point I've just been doing it for so long, I've fallen into these weird little habits and not all, not all good habits, actually. And so I'm finding where I can stop doing things that aren't helping and start doing things that help more. So I think I'm learning a lot. And I'm, I'm also trying to figure out how, how to be really technical about it. I feel there's two different ways of thinking. There's putting people into categories of one or the other, and then there's understanding that's not how the world works. There's another two different ways of thinking where there's more um, abstract mind, a mind of ideas. This is me. I'm a very abstract thinker. Um, I may not be able to cite sources or numbers from a podcast or an article I read, but if I get what they're saying, if I get the general idea of it, I get it. I get it. And I understand it. Um, you know, you could say, oh, well, you know, that's 2,050 feet far. Uh, to me, like, I wouldn't see that as numbers. But if I saw that distance, I would get what that distance is. This is me being abstract, trying to explain abstract brains. And then there's more technical brains, people who 
when they'll hear the number, they get it. They can visualize that number. Uh, people who want to see the structure, they want to understand where all the, the pixels are, where all the lines connect. Very technical, very scientific or analytical. And uh, that's not me. But I know there's a lot of people who think like that. And they it's not one's creative and one is not. Those are two very different ways of thinking that can both be very creative. So I want to be able to explain some of my abstract, asinine little thoughts in a way that uh, others can understand in English. That is my goal. That is my challenge. And it's been fun. It's been a very interesting, interesting journey of reflection. And I've only done just a few tutorials so far. Oh. So I'm looking forward to making some more of those and learning a little bit more about myself. There was a Reddit post a while ago, speaking of abstract and analytical brains. So this was, it was one of those weird posts that sucked me into the comments and the weirdness of it. Um, somebody made a mural on a wall and they posted photos of it on Reddit. And there's an argument in the comments, mostly related to the way that he phrased his Reddit post, <laughs> as many Reddit arguments and comments are wont to do. So he posted this with the title, something along the lines of saying, I have zero artistic talent, but I made this wall mural for my mom. And then you see the photos of him making this mural. And what he did was, it was a very geographic looking flower from what I remember. And what he did was he made, it was like a very graphical image. And then he put it on the wall, but he used a grid. He had like some paint or some uh, lines in a grid formation on the wall. And then he did each square one at a time. Um, it, it's kind of hard for my poor little abstract brain to explain, but he was basically using geometry to make a beautiful design and a beautiful painting on this wall. So people in the comments got really offended for two reasons. There was one party that was thinking, this guy just said he has zero artistic talent in the title. However, you can clearly see from the pictures, he's got a lot of artistic talent. What a jerk. He's just saying that so that he gets sympathy upvotes. But then there's the other party who's saying, that's not art, man. Like, you're you're using just, like, grids and lines of geography. Like, don't, why are you saying, like, you, you still have zero artistic talent? And it's just kind of like, uh, I'm reading this, and in my head I'm like, no, don't you, you're all wrong. You're all wrong. You're all going to suffer in the floods. No one suffered in the floods. But the, there, it was a weird, weird thing. Uh, first off, anytime someone declares something is not art, I just want to play devil's advocate and be like, well, hang on a second. This is why I think Kim Kardashian is an actual living piece of art. She's an art installation. Uh, and we are a part of it. Ah, and then we start getting into that performance art stuff, which, you know what? I think it does have a purpose in the world. I'm going to say it. I don't think it's weird. I don't think it's trite or frivolous. It is frivolous. But is that what the art piece is about? What is art? We're in the Matrix Incepted. What? Dinosaurs are cloned and they're combined with super genes. I don't know. I haven't seen that movie. It's not out yet. Jurassic Park. Oh, why? 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 I digress. I'm getting way off topic. Um, so that was very sad. That was very offensive. <laughs> People are like, that is not art. Because it is. I mean, it's it's design and that's a part of art and creation and somebody put that on it was shut your face um and as far as people who are saying like Lou, he is artistic talent he's just trying to be humble blah 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 like i'm the guy probably genuinely thought like i'm not really a drawer a drawer i guess it's all like the same misconception like what is art why is art why do you art 
how do you art? Well, there's just so many different ways of doing it. And yeah, there's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong answer. So keep that in mind when my face comes on your computer and tells you how to draw. You don't quite have to heat it if you don't want to. I know anytime I post something and there's already like th those little additional questions like, hey, like if you want to do this, you got to do step A. And then somebody's like, but what if I'd rather do step B first? Sometimes that can work. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Oh, man, I just saw it. Oh, um, with the watercolor supplies. There's been a handful of comments and questions about watercolor pencils, which I did not mention in my watercolor supply video, mostly because I just don't, I don't use them. They're not for me. Um, but they do have a place and a purpose in the world. And people were asking, like, is this okay to use? That, that makes, that makes me smile in a sick little way when somebody says, is it okay if I do this with my piece? Yeah, it's okay. It's totally fine. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it's okay. And that's just fine. <laughs> no one is going to kick down your door and say, that is a misuse of erasers. No one. The only judge of all of this is you when you see what you've done. <laughs> you look at what you've done and then you tell you if it's okay. That's how art is made. <laughs> it's seriously, it is so much trial, so much error, mostly error, some trial. If you've ever played the game Trials, uh, it's a lot of, it's that. You, you ride a little bike on a path and then you explode on something. You realize, oh, I didn't do that right. And then you restart and then you go a little further and you hit something and fall off your bike. And you're like, oh, okay, I got I to gotta avoid all these things. And eventually, eventually you, you kind of feel what works for you and what doesn't. And that is what artists mean when they say, oh, well, you just feel it out. Mm, mm, just, you know, you do this till it feels right. Just till it feels, till it feels good. You know, I, I've done like so much of like just these outlines. Oh God, these ink outlines. Yeah, that's. It's just a matter of feeling it out, man. Just feel it out. How do you draw that? Feel it out. Words of wisdom. <laughs> mm. The scales. Uh, you may have noticed that in this video of the dragon drawing, um, there have been some jump cuts throughout it. And uh, you'll, you may notice when we come back, from a, a cut that the paint is a slightly different color, uh, please note that that is the paint drying. Um, and this is something that I'm trying to stress with watercolor because again, in my deceptive little videos, it looks like it was all done in one fell swoop and that's a lie. Um, I've built my house on a foundation of lies that will sink into the swamp of deceit and swallow me for an eternity until they dig up my mummified body and Take me on a tour around the world, the tour that I've always wanted to go on, but the irony is I'm dead and mummified. Uh, that's the fate that awaits me. But for you, if you realize the trick with watercolor is that the paint wants to go where it's wet, where the water is, um, then you control the water, you control the paint. So it is very important to let things dry. Uh, with this painting process that I did for this particular piece, I laid down the watercolor first, and then I outlined things in ink. You could do it the other way. You could, I'm sure like some, if I did a tutorial on this and said like, oh yeah, do the paint first and then the ink, then somebody would be like, is it okay if I, if I do the ink first and then the paint, what will happen? What will happen? Well, a portal to the underworld is gonna open up and swallow your family or nothing will happen. And uh, it's just the process that you choose or a portal. Roll the dice, see what happens. Um, so yeah, the, the trick ultimately is just, you know, if you want crisp, clear lines, 
make sure that paint is dry. If you want things to be washy and blend and soft, uh, like the coloring on the dragon in this painting, you know, there's that yellow, that ochre, ochre, ochre color, and then the green pronunciation is not my forte. Uh, the yellow and green kind of have this soft blend and that was done with wet paint on wet paper. And, um, that's really, that's the key to it. And I do highly recommend if you are painting with watercolors, play around with it, have some scrap paper. If you botch a painting, if you're making a painting and it's not turning out, don't throw it away, flip it over and use the backside of it for experimenting and playing with the paint. It will be A, really, really fun to do. B, you'll learn, you'll learn, and you'll get familiar with the paints. That's really what it's about. So it's 10,000 hours. Is that how much it is? It's the idea that it takes 10,000 hours to work on something to become an expert. I think that's the right amount of time. I'm in an abstract mind. Uh, numbers hmm, don't <laughs> don't quite get it. Which, when I was visiting home with the folks for the holidays, my dad is very very good at math, and he's very mathematically minded, and he's the technical brain. And I just feel like an idiot sometimes when I'm interacting with him. I'm like, oh, and then like this guy was like that, and then like this, and like that, and then I try to throw out like a number or statistic I heard and my dad's like, really? That doesn't sound right. I'm like, I mean, it's like, mm, I don't know. Maybe if it's like a dyslexia thing, I have to, if I see the number, I got it. I'm good. If I hear the number it in my brain, it starts getting wibbly wobbly. I confuse hundreds and thousands all the time. Somebody could be like, well, that, that cost $500. And then I'll later go back and be like, Oh my goodness, that cost $5,000. And people are like, that's a lot. And I was like, I mean, five, that, five, hundred, five hundred, five thousand, five hundred, five thousand. It's very sad. It's, it's very sad. So that's why I've turned to the arts to cloak me and shield me from the cold, cold, judgmental world of practical people who are smart enough to function. And uh, I am just a pretender. <laughs> I am just drawing my way through life and hoping nobody notices. <laughs> and so far it's worked. So far it's worked. Uh, but um, I would love to hear uh, any feedback on this video because this is very different. This is very different from what I've done in the past. And, um, you know, any notes. I, and like I said, y'alls are amazing. <laughs> and I can't say that with a straight face because it's coming from the heart. And saying things from the heart with a straight face is a very difficult thing for me to do. So I'm going to say it in a really goofy voice. You guys are the best. I love you. And I do really appreciate how awesome you are. And that's me not making fun. That's me being genuine. Um, so if you do feel like you want to see more real-time videos uh, or what, like, let me know. And I know not everything I do is for everyone, especially lately. Um, I've been trying to branch out and have different kinds of content and art and videos, uh, mostly because there's demand, mostly because I go insane if I do the same thing over and over again. So I'm enjoying the challenge of, this and uh and also the opportunity to lend a little more info to you and your loved ones if they're listening or your cats or your dogs or your gerbils or your clogs so uh, let me know in the comments and you don't have to be nice uh, i i do appreciate like that's awesome thumbs up yay smileys and like all the super positive stuff if you do genuinely feel like eh, this is lacking or this is weird or or oh god her voice Oh, she should just kill herself and die. I appreciate those comments too. So thank you very much for watching. And I'm going to bring you part two of this video next week. I know that it's not like a traditional tutorial as we've come to know and love, but I, uh, 
you know, I, I need to catch up on those, <laughs> to be honest. And I do hope that you enjoy these. And um, I will bring you more later. Thank you very much for watching. A goodbye. Adieu. Bonsoir. Ciao, ciao.